Walking alone, the streets are empty The only thing I can see is my own silhouette I'm getting stronger, step by step The clock is ticking, but there's no time for me I've been flying from town to town Hi guys and welcome to the Portsmouth vs Sunderland Czech Trade Trophy final match uh, review. I know um, some of you might have expected a full on proper vlog. Uh, I did explain on social media um, a few days ago that you know I just wanted to enjoy Wembley because it was my first experience live at Wembley so I just wanted to enjoy it so I didn't want to do a full on proper vlog. Um, but anyway, you know, we'll, we'll get into the match uh, review. I did say, of course, um, in the match preview to this game, in their previous video, I did say that, you know, it's it's a day for the fans, it's a weekend for the fans, um, you know, our fans deserve it. Uh, and I wasn't too fussed about the result, which, you know, I wasn't I wasn't particularly bothered about the result. But I think, you know, in, in the manner in which we've lost tonight, or today, sorry, um... I didn't think it would hurt as much as it does, and I think that's probably due to it going down to penalties and heat at the moment and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it, it it's it definitely hurts. It definitely does hurt seeing your team at Wembley lose and penalties. Um, as you could probably tell, my throat is absolutely destroyed after <laughs> singing me out, out all afternoon. But um, so we had McLaughlin in goal. We had James uh, Baldwin, Flanagan, and O'Neill across the back. We led Bitter and Katz is the uh, is the holding midfielders. We had Morgan, Honeyman, and McGeady uh, behind Will Grigg. And now we come out in the first half, and it was one of the best performances we've seen all season from us. We absolutely dominated. We really did football wise. We played some really really good football. Dominated possession. Made plenty of chances. Morgan for me was probably the best player on the pitch in that first half. He was absolutely excellent. He was causing them endless problems down the right hand side. He was cutting him from right to left, uh, or sometimes they'd show him outside on the right, and he was just he was just an absolute nightmare for them, and they couldn't deal with him at all. Honeyman was excellent in that first half, I think. Um, he was just running his socks off as we come to expect from uh, from Honeyman. McGeady as well causing them nightmares, but for me, I think Morgan was probably the best player in that first half. Um, and eventually we did get a free kick, which uh, sent Sunderland fans into absolute dreamland when that hit the back of the net because, you know, you could just feel this sort of, it was almost a sense of relief because we dominated in that first half so much and we could have gone into that, into half time, 2-3-0 up and we probably should have done that. I, don't, I think Portsmouth fans would probably agree 
based on the first half performance anyway. We could have gone up 2 or 3 nil up uh, by half time. And uh, yeah, so the, the scenes when McGee scored was absolutely insane. And uh, regardless of the end result, you know, that, that those kind of memories, you know, you've seen your team score a goal at Wembley. It, it stays with you for life, regardless of that, you know, it's only the Czech trade trophy, you know, but it's it, it was definitely an amazing, amazing feeling. Um, but we come out in that second half and I couldn't believe what I seen. Honestly, could not believe what I see. We came out and it was almost as if we'd already thought we'd won. It was like we just set up shop, Ledbetter and Cats and the back line in general. They dropped 10 yards and we just asked for it. Absolutely asked for it. Ledbetter and Cats almost became, become a part of the back line. They were that deep, which left such a massive gap in the middle, which they completely capitalised on. Um, and they just dominated and we were poor. Couldn't string a pass together. Um, and then Ross made some substitutions, which a lot of people have spoke about now. Um, and they were poor. It was like Ross, far too early. It, I think Jack Ross had thrown in the towel in for negative tactics to to sort of set up shop and say, right, okay, we're going to play out for this for this win now. Far too early. Grig had come off, which, you know, afterwards, I know he'd picked up a knock during the week. But even so, bringing a striker, even if it is White, who I believe to be absolutely shit, do you know what I mean? Bring on a striker. But no, um, the three substitutions he did make uh, in the original 90 minutes, uh, Morgan had come off, who'd been our best player. James come off, you know, who wasn't great, I would say. Uh, Denver Hume come on. Uh, and Max Power come on as well. So pretty early on, or a bit too early on for my liking anyway, and or it should never really happen, we had no striker on the pitch. We tried Gooch up top. Gooch was absolutely appalling. You know, uh, Gooch hasn't been the same since the first two or three months of the season. You know, um, he's just constantly losing the ball. The amount of times he, you know, or two or three times he got forward when we were on the break, because that's all we were getting, counter-attacks, and he just got his head down. He just needs to look up, man. And he had, you know, players left and right of him. There's a couple of times where it was pretty much three on two at the back in our favour. And he just had his head down, wouldn't look up, took far too long and he'd lose the ball. And it was just so, so frustrating. And all in all, I think he was appalling. I think Power, when he came on, really didn't think he added much to the team whatsoever. Um, Denver Hume, I think, was excellent when he came on. Far better than Reese James. Um, it, it, it gives an attacking outlet down the left-hand side. Um, I, I, I can't fault his performance, Denver Hume. I really, really think he was, he was fantastic. Um but like I say, Ross, he went for these negative tactics so, so quickly, so quickly. Um, I can couldn't, I understand that change needed to be made um, because we come out in that second half completely wrong. Our attitude was completely wrong. We weren't winning anything in the air. Second ball, so we get into everything. We we're getting lazy. Uh, we we're kind of walking around the pitch a little bit. And it was almost as if we just thought we thought the game was ours and it was tied up by half time and it, it really isn't the Portsmouth are a good team in the second half in the first half of course we battered him we did but it doesn't mean that you know you can just sit back for the entirety of the second half we needed to, we needed that second goal and we didn't even go for it which was really really frustrating and you know I think Jack Ross needs to take some kind of uh, responsibility for that but uh, their goal they made it one all absolutely horrendous defending uh, they, they had the ball down the right hand side. Uh, there was literally Portsmouth players queuing up, completely unmarked, to get this cross in. Uh, and it was three and one down the left hand side, pretty much. And they dipped the ball across goal, and uh, their right back, is it Thompson, just flings himself in front of Reese James, who made no attempt really to get the ball at all. He was just ball watching. And uh, they've headed it in. Um, so that made it one all, uh, of course. Um, and it goes for extra time. And at this point, extra time. I think first off, extra time, I think, was okay. Made a couple of little chances. Um, but I think both sets of teams were just knackered at this point. Absolutely shattered. It was just a case of who had a, the most heart, the most desire. Uh, our formation was just... I mean, even the second half, our formation was just non-existent because there was too many central-minded players on the pitch. Um, and no one looked like they knew where they were playing because obviously we had Power, Cats, Ledbetter, Honeyman 
you know, all central minded players on the pitch and they, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. I, I couldn't work out our formation for the life of me. I could see what they were sort of trying to do, but they, you could tell that they didn't have a clue where they were playing. At times, Katz was playing right mid. You know, they didn't have a. It was just an absolute mess. It was a shit show tactically, um, really. Uh, but yeah, in the, in the, eventually Portsmouth get themselves in the lead in extra time, uh, which of course that was absolutely heartbreaking. I thought that was it. It's probably the least we deserve. I, th I think it was too poor of a showing in the second half where Portsmouth did just batter us. It was relentless. And uh, they probably just edged it as well in extra time. So I thought, you know, they deserved it. But McGeady gives us a lifeline with one minute left in the second half of extra time. And that feeling was absolutely insane. It was. It was absolutely insane for, for a trophy that apparently means absolutely, you know, nothing. It, that feeling was so much more than nothing, you know. It, it was definitely a... It was just insane. It, it really was. The scenes were incredible. Which, uh, of course, took us to penalties. And we know what happened from there. Cats missed a pen, uh, and everyone else scored for us. And obviously, Portsmouth scored all of their penalties, which obviously gives them the win. Um, and you know, I can't give enough credit to Cats. I really can't give enough credit to Cats, uh, even to step up for a penalty in the first place. But I think throughout the game, he was our biggest warrior. Um, he was putting his body on the line, which is what we've come to expect with Cats. Um, uh, and all in all, I think Katz did have a very good game. I, I can't fault him. I really can't. He, he was non-stop. He was working his ass off for this team. You can tell it's Sunderland through and through, and it really, really hurt him. Um, you know, to not be able to give us the silverware that it, you know our fans probably do deserve. But uh, you know, and the people question why didn't Hollyman take a penalty? Um, with him, but he's supposed to be the captain. Did he bottle it? Um, but you know, at the same time, we just don't know because he's not a penalty taker. He might just be shit at taking penalties. That might be why he didn't take one, you know. But if there was other reasons, maybe he was nervous or he did bottle it, then that's pathetic if that is the case. And uh, I'd definitely be asking questions for someone who's supposed to be our captain. But, you know, it, it is look at the draw. It is roulette. It is just bingo in it with, uh, with penalties and we were on the wrong side of it. So, unfortunately, that's the way it worked. It, again, it was a good day out for the fans. It was just sad the way it, the way it ended, I suppose. Um, and I think Jack Ross does need to be accountable for some of the tactical decisions he made because it was really, really poor. But congratulations to Portsmouth. You know, it, their fans were just as excellent as well. They really created a good atmosphere uh, at, at Wembley. And um, but 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 yeah, to, to be honest with you, I was halfway home on the train and I just thought to myself, it actually felt almost a bit of. Like like a, like a weight was lifted off my shoulders now that this competition is done with, because there's been such a big build up to it for so goddamn long now, and um, there was so much expectation with it, and I just want us to get back to focus on the league. To be fair, which is is what I said in the preview, and um, so yeah, we we go to Aquinton on Wednesday, and hopefully we can pick ourselves up. We have such a hectic schedule ahead because we have bloody games in hand coming out of our asses at the minute. Uh, but at least now we can focus on the league and what is the main priority of the season and getting the club back into the championship, um, which still hurts to say. But but uh, but yeah, so we go to Quinton on Wednesday and hopefully we can kickstart our push for those automatic places. I will be there as well. I will be doing a proper vlog for that uh, for that game as well. So, uh, but that is it, guys. For those of you who did uh, travel to Wembley, I hope you got home safe. I hope you had a brilliant weekend and um, congratulations to Portsmouth again. Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed the video, and if you have, please hit the like button for me, it'd be massively, massively appreciated, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already, to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care, and stay jamming.